today we'll be looking at the benefits of smart corporate cards, smart corporate payment cards and their features together with Mr. Peter von Spandung, Head of Sales Europe at Yokoi. And most hi, Peter. Hi, <laughs> nice. well, good, good job on the pronunciation. I know you practice that a lot starting uh, before the webinar. So I yes. had a, I had a very good teacher. <laughs> so um, yeah, and Peter, today I'm really curious to explore more about how applied um, artificial intelligence and also you know intelligence in general. How can we make our corporate cards intelligent and smart? And most importantly, what is so beneficial for businesses at this point? Because that's what really interests everyone, right? Because in, in intelligent cards is one thing, but how does this really apply or how can I really apply this to my business context or within a business context? And what does it really give me or how does it benefit me? Humans in general try to augment things with, art, with artificial intelligence, right? Because we just... Um, see you know certain things right are over our capacity or capabilities i mean not this case maybe but there are other things right where we can actually augment the daily life with artificial intelligence and we actually already do some things are more unconscious or rather you know covered behind the scenes and we don't really see it if you think about flying an airplane for example or weather forecasting smart farming speech recognition systems or some predictions of the stock market, for example, all these areas, we already apply artificial intelligence. And we also see a different degree of artificial intelligence, because that's also, I think, important, because not every process or everything needs the same level of art of intelligence in general. Um, and in the business context, of course, the application of AI powered software is also high on the agenda of organizations in general. Everyone on, wants to apply artificial intelligence, but obviously we, we need to be really careful what makes sense when and just, you know, apply accordingly and also have the biggest outcome, right? Um, so what we actually want to achieve is that the intelligence can help with decision-making processes, can save time and really support and relieve the, the the staff, the employees, that's all also one big goal. And basically there are three different types of AI which we can distinguish. Um, so we, and actually that's funny because you, you immediately recognize it's mimicking basically the, the human capabilities, the visual capabilities, the rational capabilities and the linguistic um, capabilities. And it's exactly the three different areas or types of AI we see. So, and in these, areas of AI, we primarily intend to deal with conventional problems of everyday work in an optimized way, right? And solve challenges. Um, and like I said, imitate or mimic human capabilities, but just in more you know, efficient, more sophisticated way. Um, so now they're like what I already said, they're weak and strong forms of AI. And the more complex the task, the more or the higher the level of, of intelligence has to be. But what interests us the most today, right, is, uh, or especially in this webinar, is the area of corporate cards. And at this point, for me, the question naturally arises, so what is it that's really new about intelligent cards or about intelligent payment options? What is really, you know, the, the thing about it? Um, and therefore, we, I think we need to take one step back and really look at, or at least briefly look at traditional corporate cards what what can they or what are they capable of in order to really be able to compare what is really the cool thing about the intelligent or smart cards um, and the biggest obstacle what i see or what we see is with traditional credit cards is that they really lack um, in the capability of accessing certain types of data they really don't have the access. They're not connected to software. They don't have the ability to really be yeah, checking on certain things. Um, and in order to really show a certain kind of intelligence, the card must have this access and be able to make really fast decisions. Um, for example, at the point of sales, if you think about it. And I can also come up with um, areas like uh, sorry, the travel policies, for example, you know, companies have travel policies. There are certain kind of regulations in place, spending limits for departments or even granular on an um, employee level. So all these regulations 
and allowances or even, you know, um, limits you want to um, implement, that's not as easy, right? And with conventional cards, compliance is not guaranteed by only by the bare, you know, usage of a card alone. And it's really difficult to comply with all these different regulations and monitor what's going on. So that's not as easy as it should be for an organization. And with the Yokoi cards, we really make sure or ensure that these aspects are really covered by really only using the card. So it, actually what we want to achieve is that the usage of the card is really enabling the whole organization to gain a lot of transparency, to gain a lot of control, and at the same time flexibility. And I think that's, that's what's really new. And how do we achieve it? What we actually use inside are so-called expert systems, which is a subcategory of AI. Um, and this really helps to solve the problems automatically, quickly, efficiently, and most importantly, accurately. Um, yeah, and Peter, what I really like to see, because that's a lot of theory, yeah, but now let's really take this theory um, now into a business perspective or into the business practice context. Um, yeah. And I know you prepared some cool um, use case scenarios, which really show in a nice way how things are handled now and how things could maybe be handled in the future if you using intelligent cards. Exactly, exactly. We're going to dive right into that. So Ooh. what we did, we prepared a few use cases that I think are recognizable to everybody. Day-to-day uh, -day business use cases, I would say. Well, I hope not day-to-day, -day, but very often. Um, and then we're going to paint a picture. And after that, we're going to show you how the Yoko technology helps you to overcome some of the challenges that you face if you run into such a scenario with a sort of like traditional corporate card versus an intelligent payment card. So to make it super concrete, we, we put uh, five scenarios down here. And I want to start with the first one of the flight rebooking. So in this example, you see John here. John is, as you can see, very stressed out at an airport somewhere around the world. He need to get to his conference. And he missed his connecting flight. He needs to rebook a flight, uh, but he realized that his Bank cards, not an intelligent card, is maxed out. Um, so what happens for, for John? John has to call his bank, talk to a robot first, put in a waiting queue, has to explain the whole situation, has to identify if I'm, I'm actually John, can you please refund my account or issue increase my spending limit? Um, of course, it all takes more time, more stress. It's, it's far from hassle-free. So in an ideal world, and that's what we will show you today with the Yoko cards, the organization or even John himself, depending on the rights you give to somebody, is fully in charge. So your spending limit is not something that you have to call a third party for, like a bank or a card issuer, but your organization is in control. And it's at the tip of your fingers, you can increase your spending limit for the week, for the month, or even issue quickly a new card just for the flight booking. And um, that's the reality that we will show you today in the, in the demo environment after, after these scenarios. Yeah, I think right. that's something really everyone um, can really relate to because, I mean, how long does it take for you? I mean, even privately, right? If you want to have a new card, how long does it take that you actually exactly. receive Before it? Before right? it gets to you, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So it's uh, also, that's a good point, actually, Maria. we will show that as well in how quickly we can issue yeah. even a new card, yeah. virtual, yeah. physical, uh, with a matter of seconds, basically. All right, so next scenario maybe even a little bit worse, you lose your company card. So let's not, let's not blame John again. Let's make it Jackie this time. So Jackie is also going to this conference. He's stress-free. He booked her flights, no rebooking of flight. But at the conference, he wines and dines her customer. She's like having a blast, but realized, hey, I lost my card. But good to mention here that Jackie is not alone in this. So there was a study, you can look it up, 2019, the US study, but I think it's pretty universal. 29% of card users lose their card at least once every five years, 29% of card users. So with a traditional bank, what happens, the whole story starts again, right? You have to call the bank, issue a new card, get my card unblocked. The whole riddle starts again. Um, and now the fun fact, out of these people that lose their cards over 29%, 53% of those people find their card back within two days. 
<laughs> but most of them, the majority of them have already called their bank panicking like, hey, I lost my card, please block it immediately. So how do we solve this? So with smart cards, we put you in charge again. So a smart card allows you to freeze and to terminate your card at the tip of your fingers instantly within a matter of seconds. But this distinction between freezing and terminating is crucial. Because think about the 53% who find their card back within two days. If you would terminate that, then your whole riddle starts again. And you have to call your bank, issue the new card. We allow you to freeze it. We allow you to terminate at the tip of your finger. And I will show you in a minute how easily that is done from the Yokoi environment. All right, next scenario. So we switch now a little bit from sort of like the card holder, the person who has to card to the organizational view. So if you think about a cost control and, and transparency, what the reality today is, if you're working with traditional third party cards, is that in the finance department, um, Frank Finance, let's call him like that, mm -hmm. currently works with very static view on the financial state. Meaning you have to wait till the card statement comes in at the end of the month before you can close out the month. So there's no direct and, and real-time visibility basically on your cost and on your cash flow. Yeah. Basically, it means that yeah, you're always looking in the rear view mirror, but that doesn't tell you anything about where you need to go, right? You need to look in front yeah. of you. So having direct a direct view on your cost control, your transparency, real-time insight, hey, what have I spent? What can I still spend? That will allow you to forecast better, to budget better, and ensure that you're not looking backwards, but that you're able to look ahead. And that's in the end, the core of finance, right? Steer the organization and ensure that you're making the right financial decisions. Definitely, yeah. We will show you also today with how fast you can see from a cost control and transparency perspective, how fast Yoko helps you there in the, in the life environment. All right. Next one. This is my favorite one, actually. This is, uh, I call him Jeff. He has, Jeff, he has Jeff way too less, he has way uh, too few gray hairs, right? <laughs> he does. He does. This is not, this is a really good stress. picture for Jeff. Because so, um, and I, I know there are a lot of finance people in this call, and everybody will relate to this if, if this is your day to day. So, when John and Jackie go out to the conference and they wine and dine their customers, they're, of course, also responsible for. Uh, keeping every receipt and ensuring that it matches with the transaction because in the end, if you want to have a clean bookkeeping, we have to close out the month. This is what's, what's crucial. But usually the finance department or somebody in like an assistant function is, is responsible for ensuring that every everything is accounted for, meaning matching all the transactions from the card to the actual receipts. With traditional cards, this is always a hassle. So it's a manual job of like looking at the statements, matching the receipts. Sometimes there's there's some tool or automation that can help you, but it's it's a manual job. It feels like meaningless work. You don't want to be, nobody went to school to like look at receipts and match them to transactions. Mm. Um, and it's of course, because it's so manual, it's very prone to error and prone to error immediately means that, hey, the books are not clean. So the risk is super, super high here. So ideally, and again, this of course relates to the smart and the intelligent cards. Ideally, this is done in a fully automated way. And we will show you today how we unburden Jeff from this task, how we unburden John and Jackie from this task, and that every transaction that you do with a smart Yokoi card immediately fuels into real time in a transaction overview and immediately is matched at the moment that you upload, upload the receipt with only, without any manual exposition and with yeah, no room for error in that process. Mm -hmm. Looking at the AI, of course, again. All right, last one, and this is a bit of a Harsh one, we realize that fraud, and we try to look for a picture that is sort of like not too harsh here. Um, but in real world scenarios, fraud, actually very innocent cases can be marked as fraud from a bookkeeping perspective. So again, if we think about John and Jackie at the conference, they're on their way home, they're catching their flight and last minute, like everybody does, they get a souvenir at the airport. And because they're in a hurry, because they have to catch it like they accidentally pull out their corporate card instead of their personal card because they paid the whole week with their corporate card. If you don't, if you don't um, screen this out, this can be marked as fraud already. So it's again on Jeff and on John and on Jackie to really mark this out. And then the whole journey starts again. Hey, how do I reimburse this? Uh, do I do it with HR, with my payments, with my uh, payroll? So again, ideally, 
what you do is that you have the capability, you have really intelligent software that's supporting your cards, your payments uh, card, intelligent software where you can easily mark an expense or a transaction that you did as a private expense. Like, hey, I accidentally paid this with my card. And then the rest via integration with either an HR or payrolling system or an ERP system is completely automated. And there's no way for you to make any mistakes there and no manual entry is, is needed. Mm -hmm. um, again, of course, we will show also this real life scenario and how Yoko helps you to do so. Super, All righty. Cool. I think those were the uh, those were the scenarios we have we have planned. What we will do now, um, we will switch to a live demo environment. And of course, this demo environment it's a demo environment, so there's dummy data in the, in there. But we will thinking back of the cases that we just mentioned, we will look at a few options how we ease the life of John, Jackie, and Jeff in this case, and how we ensure that. Um, uh, there's no room for error and everything works in a very efficient and easy to use manner. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna to switch to the environment here. Um, yeah, I think the, the, this view is already, this, this relates to one of the scenarios already. So if you think about cost transparency and cost control, thinking about, hey, end of the month, I wait till my bank statement comes in and then I see the money that has been spent. Here you have a real life direct overview on this, of course, a simplified view on one card. This can also be an aggregated view. Um, but what is my current balance? What are the reservations? So what I currently have available? And instead of only looking in a rearway mirror, like, hey, review mirror, after you got the bank statement, you can actually look ahead and see, hey, are we on track? And do we have enough budget? And did we forecast properly for, for the month? So the, the real life view happens here. And of course, there's more, way more analytics. We won't get to that granular level today that we can provide to finance teams in the Yoko environment. So before we move to the card freezing and like the, the, the John and the Jackie scenarios, let's quickly show how easy it is to issue a new card. I mean, yeah, this actually even also relates to the scenario. So here you see that the issue of a card is just a click of a button away. Um, you come into this view where you go to a flow that basically allows you to issue the card. So you can search for the people that you want to issue the card for. Let's take Philip now as an example here. Um, Philip is a card holder. You can give the card a different name. What many of our customers do, they issue cards to a certain person, but it can also be to a department, or we can say, hey, Philip, new flight booking, just a one-time card, or it can be Philip Project XYZ. So you can address the cards to, to a card holder, to a person, but you can also give a business purpose to what that is reflected then in the card name. Here you have the option for physical and virtual cards. Virtual card, of course, immediately available via Android, Android Pay or Apple Pay. Let's take the physical card example for now. You can set the spend amounts easily. So we do a thousand euros here, let's say uh, per week. So 4,000 euros per month is issued. Then the only thing you have to do is put in the shipping address. So we'll choose the Yoko Amsterdam offers in this case. Demo company is fine for now. You issue the card, there's one final check in the flow, hey, is everything all right? Did I set the spending limit right? Is address correct? And if everything is correct, you confirm and issue the card. And within, what was it, 45 seconds, I issued a new card. It's going to be sent. You can notify the card owner here if you want to, if you haven't done so uh, privately. Um, and it's issued within seconds. It, it's shipped to the address and it gets there within two to three days. Virtual cards, of course, immediately. I would like to uh, issue my new credit card it's like that as well. <laughs> we can do it after the demo. As right? easy as that. Oh, oh, I have my own. I have my own Yokoi card. <laughs> but I mean, for my consumer cards, that would that would uh, be nice if it would be that. I'm not sure if I can help with that today, but yeah. let's see. Let's take that offline. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So that's the issue cards, just to show you quickly. And maybe if we, maybe it's good to also look at the Jackie and or the John scenario for a little bit. John can also, instead of like increasing the spending limit, can say, hey, I want to just issue a new card just for this new flight, a uh, virtual card. And then his problem is also solved, right? Within a matter of, what was it? 45 seconds. So um, Philip, we just saw, we ordered that card and you see that the status here, the overview in Yoga, you see that the status, it shows actually ordered. So when, once it arrives and it's activated, then it will show up as active. Now let's switch to the John scenario. So John, you see here, is stuck at the airport. Um, 
we can, there are two ways to do this. So depending on the admin rights, John can do this himself. If he's like a super user of Yoko, he can do this himself or your finance department or your boss or whoever has the rights can help you out in this, in this scenario. So you see the overview here, John has a spending limit of 10,000 a month. This is what is available. It's a very expensive flight because he's not gonna make it with the 2,300 euros. So what John does, he says, hey, I wanna increase my spending limit to 15,000. And yeah, I have full conference ahead of me. So I'm gonna set it per week instead of per month. Mm -hmm. You save the change. And from that moment on, the spending limit has changed. So it takes five to 10 seconds. And John is basically saved from the situation He's not having to call his bank, no, no robots, no waiting lines, nothing. He saves the situation, books his new flight, and he's on the go again. So that's how easily it is done with an intelligent card versus an traditional corporate cards that are still floating around a lot, unfortunately. All right, let's move to Jackie. Jackie lost her card, um, as we know. Um, she's a little bit stressed out, but uh, if it was a corporate card, she was really stressed out as she was on the phone right now. With Yokoi, again, it's a few clicks away. So this is, of course, this is for everybody who has a card, has this possibility. So this is not related to any admin rights. You can immediately freeze your card, give it two days for, to, for the 53% of people who find it back in two days. If you don't find it back or you think, hey, I'm 100% sure I lost, of course you can terminate. But if you find it back, boom, it's, you unfreeze it again. Your card is on pause and you can use it. So you reduce the risk for fraud with two clicks of a button. There's no delay in there, it's real time. Um, and it's at the tip of your fingers. So everybody who has a card can do it immediately from, from the software instead of having to call your bank, waiting to use robots and all the hassle that comes with that. That's of course, true. it can also happen that um, you actually, actually lost it. Um, so that's the scenario we'll see here. It works exactly the same way. You terminate the card. The only thing here, you get a warning like, hey, if you do this, you actually, you can't undo this. So if you terminate the card, it's gone and you have to issue a new one. Although it's super easy, <laughs> please think about, hey, is this really, are you sure you're not going to find it again? You mm -hmm. terminate the card, you get an... Uh, an um, confirmation that is terminated and that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we, uh, yeah, you see here now also, hey, this card, is, this, this card is terminated. So it's a real life view that gives you an, a view on, hey, what's the status of every, of every card. So those were the sort of like the travel scenarios that we just discussed and also the cost control scenario. But of course, we're, we, on, we don't forget about uh, Gray Hat uh, Jeff, the receipt chaser. So Jeff is, of course, task with matching all the transactions with the receipts. So let's move to the transaction overview. And maybe while going there, it's good to think about, hey, normally this, this overview comes in at the end of the month and you're looking backwards and then you have to start this process. In Yokoi, with a smart card, the transaction feed is real time. So you see, hey, there are a lot of transactions that are already matched here. But there are also some transactions that are not matched yet, meaning, hey, the transaction is done, but the receipt is not in the system yet. So there are two ways to get the receipts in the system. The easiest way, which we will not show today, but we're happy to do in a later situation, is via your phone. You make a picture of the receipt in the Yoko app and it pops in here. But just to stay in the demo desktop environment, um, let's go to the paper clip here. Then you see I have a picture here. I upload the picture. You see it's a demo expense, it's still in draft. So I actually need to uh, submit this expense. I can do a final check. Maybe quick stop here on the artificial intelligence. Um, of course, it's a buzzword that everybody uses, but this is actually where yoga really thrives because you see that everything on this receipt here is read out correctly. We see the country, we see the total amount, the expense date. Everything is read out. You can do a final check and, and can change a few things if, if you want. But once you do that, you submit the receipt. And what you see, you automatically get a pop-up. Hey, it was uh, successfully submitted. We automatically match the receipt to the card transactions. You go to the card transaction and you see that the receipt that was still showing as not matched is now matched real time in the overview. So Jackie is not tasked with it. John is not tasked with it. Jeff is not yet no longer chasing receipt. The, sophistication of the software takes over, a smart card that you can use anywhere around the world, and the artificial intelligence matching the two items of the transaction and the receipt in the software directly. Um, 
I think the final thing, going back to the case of Jackie and, and John, basically the fraud case, the incidental fraud case, they pay privately, they pay a, a private uh, uh, expense with their, with their company card. If they do so, one click of a button, they can mark it as private. And you see here, it's private. We integrate with the ERP or the other payment system that, that's involved and it's all handled uh, automatically without any manual human intervention involved there. So it's a really quick overview going from like the theoretical practice to the business scenario that we showed on the slide into the demo, the dummy environment of Yokoi. Um, of course, this is super quick, so we're happy. I see a lot of participants in the in the room. I see some hands also already, but we're happy to also in the later stage give a more granular view on how this uh, on how this works. Definitely, yeah, it's super super cool. And actually, I'm I'm happy for Jeff. You know that he doesn't have to chase the receipts anymore. <laughs> Jeff is um, very also, happy himself as well. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. So right. I think. Peter, thanks for the demo. And I think what it's what might make sense at this point is that we go through the benefits, right, of the card. So yeah. like let's just summarize what that actually means for organizations if they use it and what if they, you know, configure everything and administer the cards themselves, like what you just showed, how this can really benefit and which areas it will have effects. Absolutely. So I'll hand that over to you. Sure, thanks. So what Peter just showed, I think it covered a lot of things in a short time, right? But actually, the good thing about it is that it's really, in, in reality, it also just takes a few seconds to do certain tasks, which uh, in a traditional way would really take much, much longer. And in addition to that, you don't have the transparency you actually need. So let's go through the benefits one by one. And I think one of the most important things, which I also mentioned at the beginning, mm -hmm. is the compliance issues or the compliance topics because they're just coming up um, and it's super hard especially if you want to equip everyone in the organization with a card with a company card then the problems normally start because then you lose control you lose control but this and then yeah. you can it's even harder right to really be compliant to really meet regulations internal external whatever that is so one, I think, main benefit is really that your compliance is really made easier by being able, for example, to set individual spending limits. Yeah, you can easily make sure that your travel policies are met, that your um, internal regulations are easily yeah, mm -hmm. set into. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe one thing, and that goes even beyond cards here, uh, Malena, but if we think about compliance, and of course it's attached to card because you can, for example, set individual spending limits, mm -hmm. but with Yoko, it goes a step further. And that's again, what to your earlier point on the artificial intelligence, you mentioned travel policies, but we can, we can embed a layer of data of the uh, uh, policies of an organization. So travel policy, but expense policies in general, we, upload that layer of data into the Yokoi software. And if we then recognize a receipt that is not compliant with that policy, the submitter automatically gets warned, finance automatically gets warned, hey, there's a spending limit of 35 euros. For loans, hey, this is 45 euros. So yeah. it goes even further than, than only the cards. It's like it's the cards together with the software with AI fueling that full compliance and reducing the risk and reducing the yeah, the prone to errorness of the of the of the processes. Definitely, and I think that actually also pointed out very well that the cards are not, you know, shouldn't be seen individually, right? They're actually enabling a lot of other things, and you know, and of course, in in um, combination with the expense module, for example, it yeah. really has the best effect, which you actually would like to achieve, you know, because all those policies about your, you know, expenses in general they are also covered by Yokoi and then um, put into place or actually put into action then when those uh, expenses come in, right? Through a company credit card okay. or a company card. So another factor which you mentioned was the transparency and also when you showed, you know, the overview of the transactions and what yeah. is you know, about bookings, reservations, and, you know, what do I actually still have in terms of cash? So the transparency and control which you're gaining are so important factors uh, especially at the management level, because you also, I think you, you made a really nice point by saying, so what does it really, you know, 
bring or give to you if you only look at historical data, right? So mm -hmm. what you really want to do is real time and the future or, you know, what everyone wants is to be able to predict certain things. But how can I even achieve that stage if I'm only able to look at static historic reports? So what yeah. we enable you to do is really to have this, this instant overview about transactions and not only at the end of the month but really during the month every transaction which is made with the card okay. will be shown in the system and i, and I think on that point sorry Malen, to jump in quickly okay. i think on that point i think a fame uh, uh, one of the most uh quotes that stuck with me the most from an, uh, a cfo um, podcast that i listened to was mm -hmm. finance has moved in the past decade or so has moved from reporting the news to mm -hmm. to making the news and yeah. that's that's exactly what it is it's like are we as a finance department are we looking back do we wait for the data to come to us and then look back hey did we do everything correctly yeah or can we have real-time insight into our spending and we give a very simplistic view today we give a view on one company card and what is the spending limit but of course with all the data that flows into Yoko, the aggregate meta view really helps finance departments to steer accurately. And that is the role that finance has today. The role of a CFO is to be the co-pilot, to steer the organization in the right direction. And by giving that transparency, that real-time insight and that cost control, you really enable them to be that co-pilot and not be the cab driver that is in the looking in the rear view mirror. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. I really that that was very well said, Peter, because I think that's really what um, what we would like to achieve, right, with your quite in general to really enable these these kind of things. So, and the additional flexibility with which comes with it, right, gained through also the self service of the card administration, because that's not something you know which is which is normal, right? Because like you also mentioned in your examples, it's not normal to administer these kind of things yourself, this is done by your bank. Um, but if you always have to refer to a third party, then of course things get delayed or things are not you know, done in a timely manner. And also the creation of virtual cards directly via the card um, um, administration really brings a plus, a big plus as well, because it's not a given, right? That you can do this instantly and also not instantly use cards you issue um, for certain purposes. So that's really, I think, um, a really big plus here as well. And then last but not least, thank you about Jeff again. You know, the less manual, less manual effort is really also a thing which, which um, should be mentioned here because um, this is just a time consuming task, right? Chasing the receipts and, you know, matching the whole thing, you know, transaction with the receipt. Um, so this is also something which I think um, is definitely bringing a lot of benefit here to the table. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in the end, it comes down to this, right? It comes to how can we compliance, give you full transparency control in a flexible yeah. way with less manual app. That's what it comes down to. And we were being a bit picky on Jeff. I actually see two Jeffs in our <laughs> participants. So by no means that's that's in intended. One Jeffrey, one Jeff. But um, we are here to ease the life of, of finance departments and to yeah make them um, focus their time on strategic initiatives and and the priorities, we work a lot with customers that are in fast growth or that have to maybe even cut costs and like giving you that view that really helps you to do more meaningful work instead of like yeah. the manual redundant tasks. That's what we aim to do with our, with our solution. Mm -hmm.